Okay, so today we're going to look at the Spearman's rank coefficient. And so consider that we have this group of students um, and it relates the number of hours that they spent studying and the score they got as a percentage on their math test. And so what we can notice is that we had Kyle and Steve both studied the same amount. They had similar scores. Anton, Lucas, and Julie also studied the same amount. Um, and so let's actually calculate, calculate the linear regression line. And so, so let's take a look at our calculator. If I take a look at my list, I can see I've already added these values in. And if I go to my stat plot, it's turned on. And let's zoom to number 9, which is statistics. And there we can see that a linear relationship is quite reasonable to make this scenario. So let's do our regression line. So I can go statistics. I'm going to calculate my regression line, number 4. Uh, x, y, and then I'll put the regression line into y1 just in case I need to do anything with it. And I calculate it and my regression line is, I can say that y is equal to 8.40x plus 32, oh, 33.0 has three significant figures, making sure you include the point zero. So here's my regression line, and the R value is 0 0.869. And so because of that R value, what I can say is that there is a strong positive linear correlation between hours, between the hours and the score. Okay, and so just that's just a quick review of our R values. Now, but let's continue on through this scenario. Here's my, but I'm going to now find what is called the Spearman's rank coefficient. In order to do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank all my hours. And I'm going to go from the most hours, the biggest value is number one. Woohoo! Cindy's number one, she studied the most. So Cindy is going to be number one. And let me just uh, try to line these up so I can more simply transfer them back and forth. And so when I do this, Cindy I know is number one. She studied the most. And then I know that all these three people all study them out. So they should be two, three, and four. But if I take two, plus three, plus four, and divide it by three. I have to find the average because they all get equal amount. I know that this is going to be, they're going to be three, three, and three. So the next person then is going to be Jim, who studied for six hours. So it's two, three, four. So he is going to be five. And then Nikki is six. Henry is seven. June is eight. Tim is nine. And then this is number 10 and 11. So if I average 10 and 11, that gives me 10.5. And so they both share the ranking of 10.5. I do the same thing for the scores. I look for the highest value. Ooh, Lucas scored the highest, so he is number one. And I go down from there. And so this is two. Uh, I can see the next person. It is going to be here, 3, 85, then I'm going to go to 80, or 83, sorry, 83 is 4. Well, this is 5 and 6, so again, they're going to share it, 5.5 and 5.5. And if I keep on going, there's that was 6, and so 79 is 7. I can see that this is 79 and 79, so this is 7, this is 7, this is 8. Eight, so I have to share them, so it's 7.5, 7.5, then I'm on to 9, which is here, and then 10, and then poor Steve got the lowest score of 11. And so now what I'm going to do, I've ranked my scores from the most hours to the least hours, and so I'm going to find the R value for the rank data. So I'm going to do the same kind of scenario, do by linear regression, and I'm going to put this rank values, and you can see in L3 and 4, I've already put the values. And so I'm going to do my linear regression on L3. 
and L4. Uh, and we'll just calculate it. And so now my R value, my R sub S says 0 0.776. And what this R value actually means, it says it is a strong positive rank order. That means as, w as one goes up, the, as someone's hours relative to each other, like the ranking of the hours versus the ranking of the scores, as one goes up, the other one goes up fairly well too. And if I want to take a look at the scatter plot, I'll change this one here. We'll change it to L3, L3, and L4. And now if I zoom to stat here, you can see that again, it does. As one goes up, the other tends to go up as well. Okay, so what the, the Spearman's rank does, RS, it is a measure of monotonicity, monotonicity, which means as the x values go up, so do the y values. Or if it's negative, as the x values go up, the y values go down. And so if there is the, the values of them don't matter, it's where they are ranked. And so that is what monotonicity tells us. So it tells us how much it is consistently increasing or decreasing. But, oh, oh, more information here. We missed a student. Sean studied for 0 0.5 hours and scored 100. So if I go here, if I add Sean, he studied for 0 0.5 and he scored 100. Well, that's going to cause grief throughout my rankings and my linear scenario. So what happens now is he is the lowest value, so that's quite easy. We'll do Sean, we'll do Sean in green. And so I am just going to be, this was the 11th, so he is going to be 12th here. But he got the highest score. So he's actually going to be 1. And he is going to be 2. So I'm going to have to add 1 to all of these values here. And then, so this is 8.5, 4, 8.5, 12, 11, 5, 6.5, and 10. Okay, and so in doing this, what I'm going to do then is I want to now find the new R value and also the adjusted rank. So if we go to statistics, let's try and be clever about this. Let's go to L1 first of all. And so I'm going to just add Sean's score. This is my hours, 0.5, enter. And we'll do our 100, enter. And now if I do my, oh, well, might as well do the other ones as well over here. Mm, sorry, I'm going to go edit. I'm going to edit my list. So now I am just going to go in here. I'm just going to add 12, because I know he is the 12th person. <clears throat> L, this one's a little trickier. What I really want to do, I want to add one to all of these and then insert a one at the very end. So what I'm going to do is L5. I'm going to go to L5. I'm going to clear what's there first. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to take L4. I'm going to add one. And so now there's all the adjusted ones. And then I'm going to also have to add number one. So there's a clever way of adjusting this without a lot of work. And so now I'm going to do, I'll do my new R, RS value. So I'm going to do statistics, calculate number four. It's still L3, but I want also L5 now. And so my RS value is equal to 0 0.361. However, if I come along and if I do my, oh, if I do my just pure Pearson's coefficient on the regression scenario, number four, let's go to L1 and L2. And 
And when I calculate this, my R value for here is 0 0.148. <clears throat> and so Spearman's changed from here to here, so 0 0.8 to 0 0.4, whereas if I look at the R coefficient 869, I know the original one here was 869. And so what I can see is that the Pearson's coefficient is very much more affected by outliers than uh, this Spearman's rank coefficient. Because Sean is definitely an outlier because he's like, he doesn't study at all and he gets a crazy high score. So he's like, the antithesis of the overall pattern. And so the Spearman's is less affected by outliers. So this is less affected by outliers. Okay, so if we want to compare Spearman's rank coefficient to the Pearson's moment correlation coefficient, the R value, let's consider this. So if we consider these two scenarios, I know that both of them, and I'm sorry about the notation, but both of them are between negative one and one. Okay, now, if R is plus or minus one, it is a perfect straight line. However, if the Spearsman's rank R is plus or minus one, then it's always, every case is increasing or decreasing. So this relationship between the values are always increasing or decreasing. R tells us the strength of the linear relationship, whereas R sub S, and I lost my S here, is the strength of the order. So how strong as one goes up, the other goes up, which is the monotonicity. R is more affected by outliers. The Spearman's rank is less affected by outliers. And if R equals zero, there's no correlation. And if R sub S equals zero, there is no monotonic relationship. One of the advantages of the Spearman's is it can be used on nonlinear data. So if I had a scenario where I had a graph that was clearly like this, this is definitely not linear, it's going downwards. But if I would do a rank order of this, it would be very strongly negative. It actually would be uh, of an order negative close to one, close to negative one, if not exactly equal to one. So there's your quick scenario, or not quite so quick scenario, of Spearman's rank coefficient in a comparison with Pearson's moment correlation coefficient.